Hi, it's Mark from Top Local. We're here with Bernie Pollock. Pollock Automotive in Vancouver, 18 time winners of best auto repair in Vancouver, BC, as voted by their customers. How are you doing, Bernie? Good, very well, Mark. So, we're going to talk about an ancient 1990 Mercedes 300E with a drive shaft coupler replacement. We had a discussion about this. So, so why are we talking about a 27 year old vehicle? Well, we're talking about it uh, because the drive shaft coupler actually is a, is a part that's still used on, on modern vehicles. It's not a, even though this car is old, uh, it's not a technology that's, it's the technology that's still in use. So, and it's something that requires replacement. Uh, recently, we did one on the Cadillac STS uh, a month or two ago with a vibration issue. So it's something that it's used on a, a, a variety of cars, uh, rear wheel drive only, um, and uh, or, or all wheel drive, depending on, on the vehicle. But yeah, it's, it's technology that's still used nowadays. So what does a drive shaft coupler do? Basically, it connects the drive shaft. So this will be from the uh, transmission to the uh, rear differential. And it, it connects the two, uh, it connects the drive shafts, but it's used on vehicles that have independent rear suspension uh, in, in place of a U-joint. Like a universal joint uh, allows a lot of movement of the drive shaft. So if, for instance, on a say, uh, a truck, you know, a Ford truck, you know, where you've got the differential, it's banging, moving up and down. When you hit bumps, you need a, a flexible coupler that's going to be able to take a lot of movement, maybe if, if several inches of movement. Whereas on this vehicle, the drive shaft goes across, you know, pretty well straight from the transmission to the differential, but it needs a, a bit of a flexible coupler because it's not exactly a straight uh, shaft. So it needs a bit of a flexible coupler at each end. Yeah, so you've explained why we use this connection. Is this a time consuming repair? Um, it can be, uh, it depends uh, from car to car. Um, this one, fortunately, on this particular Mercedes, it was the front coupler that was worn out. It was probably the easier of the two to get to. There's usually one at the front and one at the back. Um, it, but it depends, again, on the vehicle. Sometimes you have to remove the exhaust because the drive shaft is buried way up in a tunnel and there's exhaust shielding and things in the way. Back in the old days, like, you know, even earlier than this Mercedes, a lot of them were, were very accessible and easy to get at. And uh, as I said, they're using a wide variety of mostly European vehicles, but a lot of uh, a lot of other vehicles we use them too, like I mentioned, a Cadillac. I'll just get into a video. Good. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look at the uh, this video here. Um, just a second here. We'll... This is this is the actual worn out coupler suit. You can see some movement here. That's that part is actually broken. There, there should be no there should be no movement of, of that sort at all. So um, just to look again, look at this um, piece here. I'm going to move back a little bit on the video and. Right here, you can kind of see the coupler pretty, pretty well. There's there's a rubber piece. There's there's six bolts, uh, three on the drive shaft, and this this end is attached to the transmission to a flange on the transmission. And the um, uh, there's basically a, like a metal sleeve in here, and it's basically broken off the rubber coupler. So there's uh, uh, that's that's what's wrong with this thing. But they do they do tend to crack. There's other things that can happen to them, but this one is actually broken. Uh, if it got any worse, of course, this drive shaft would start flinging around and it would be a lot of bang. So, and how do, how's the time frame for lasting with these couplers? Well, I would guess this one may actually be original, which is you know, 27 years old at this point. But uh, the Cadillac we worked on was about a 10-year-old Caddy. So uh, um, it, it really varies. I mean, I see Mercedes that are you know, 10, 12, 13 years old where they're, where they're worn out. So this one seems to lasted quite a long time and it may have been replaced previously too it's hard to say for sure but um i don't you know 10 to 20 years is kind of an average lifespan for these pieces and how would someone know or suspect that their dry shaft coupler was worn or wearing out excellent question so uh, on this particular mercedes the owner had no idea because nothing much was really happening but i would suspect that when you shift from say reverse to drive there would probably be a, a more pronounced clunk or thud noticed in the vehicle. Um, the Cadillac we serviced, there was a severe vibration. When you go to accelerate slightly, the car would shake. Um, so that's another thing that happens. Um, you know, visual inspection is an important thing. And this is, you know, we talk about having your car serviced and visually inspecting them to look at them uh, and seeing if they're braking is, is an important thing to fix it before it gets to the point like this Mercedes. But if it got really bad, you just hear a lot of horrible clunking and vibrations as you accelerate or decelerate or shift from gear to gear. So those are the kind of things you want to look for. 
And that would be similar with a U-joint, wouldn't it? It would be, yeah. It, uh, actually, it is. You know, U-joints create similar things, clumps, vibrations, shapes. And uh, U-joints will actually squeak sometimes. You know, they, they, they have, like, little needle bearings, and they're packed with grease, and they'll dry out. So sometimes a U-joint will actually make that, like, a squeaking sound when you accelerate, which you can hear sometimes. Uh, one of these couplers won't do that, of course, because it's a piece of rubber. But, uh, you know, similar, similar issues. And I, I think we sort of answered this, but is Mercedes the only brand of vehicle that uses these? Yeah, no. Uh, there is, yeah, we did answer that. So, yeah, there, there's a variety of vehicles. As I said, Cadillac comes to mind, uh, Mercedes, a lot of uh, other European cars use them. Um, no, I don't know so much Japanese, but uh, certainly American. You see them on American and, and European cars. There's probably some Japanese, but it's, you know, I've slipped my mind for the moment. Seeing Japanese seem to like U joints on, on there their drive shafts so would this be something to if you're having clunking or kind of difficulty with your shifting is that a a, a reason to get this checked absolutely yeah especially as as i mentioned if you you know if you're shifting from so out of park into uh drive or from drive to reverse and you hear a loud kind of thump or thunk that's kind of unusual that's definitely something to be looked at for sure that, that could, that's a definite cause so there you go if you're looking for service for your vehicle and it's got a bit of a clunk when you're shifting out of park or you've got some vibration while you accelerate it might be your drive shaft coupler and you should see pollock automotive in vancouver you can call them at 604-327-7112 check out their website pollockautomotive.com or our youtube channel pollock automotive thanks bernie thanks mark